Thank you for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you very much for your trust as we track uh, Raphael very much on track from what we've talked about together the last few days. And that is my goal to keep things uh, on track to hopefully have that forecast be exact so you know what to expect. And so far, everything is holding. It is getting stronger as expected. Nothing crazy stronger in the uh, short term. There's been some drier air that's been sneaking into this. I want to show you all of the computer models, all that sciencey stuff with this, where I think this will eventually end up. That second area we're watching as well in zoom down island by island. Each island, whether big, small, uh, matters. Uh, when it comes to the weather, we are just tracking it and that's what we do together. So here's Jamaica. Thank you for leaving the comments, location, what you have going on. I've been watching those all through the night and this morning with some heavier areas of rain as Raphael is working its way through Jamaica right now. Here is the most likely track and I showed you this days and days ago. Just kind of expanding it out in time and made some subtle tweaks to this. Of course, the tropical storm conditions right now in Jamaica as expected. Now, as we get into tonight, this is going to approach the Cayman Islands and move into the Cayman Islands. So uh, for us, uh, both the uh, Big Island, Grand Cayman, over toward Little Cayman, uh, Cayman uh, Brack, uh, we're going to see uh, near hurricane conditions, tropical storm to hurricane conditions. It will strengthen, could become a hurricane. I haven't gone as strong as the National Hurricane Center, and they've actually backed off a little bit. I just haven't been seeing that with some of the drier air moving in. So it'll either be a strong tropical storm or potentially a Category 1 hurricane near the Cayman Islands, then working into western Cuba. Uh, by the time we get into tomorrow, then pulling offshore, as expected for the Florida Keys, heaviest weather stays to the west. We'll get clipped by some tropical storm conditions across the lower Keys. Then this will move its way uh, into the northern Gulf of Mexico. As it does, I do expect some weakening with this as we work our way Friday into Saturday. This should be weakening as it works its way into the northern Gulf. Now, it may kind of shoot up to the north uh, or it may go back to the west. Not sure about the tail end of that yet. I'll show you the differences in that with the American and the European model. But in the short term, hurricane warnings are up for western Cuba as we've expected. We've been talking about that for days and days, the potential of some stronger winds and high rain totals. And then back through the Cayman Islands, the hurricane warnings are up uh, back through Jamaica. Of course, we have the tropical storm conditions now. Tropical storm warnings are in place. And while those tropical storm conditions for the next several hours for the good portion of the day, I showed you this map yesterday. I mentioned my goal is to be consistent. This is generally holding the higher end winds would be around 50 to 60 miles per hour. Could be a little bit stronger in spots. So anywhere from about 80 to 95 kilometers an hour. We'll have some of those winds gusting 50, 60 miles per hour. Could be a little bit stronger. So I got us covered in Jamaica, no doubt. The rain was the biggest threat. The winds will be gusty. Let me know how you're doing. I'll be trying to go back and forth with you as we go throughout the day. All right, moving right along to the Cayman Islands. Same thing I showed yesterday. It is still generally holding right on the edge of those hurricane conditions. Hurricane winds are 74 miles per hour sustained or greater. And I think we'll have at least some gusts that'll be near 75 miles per hour, 120 kilometers an hour over toward uh, Bracken, back toward Little Cayman. You get toward uh, Grand Cayman winds could gust as high as around 60, 65 miles per hour, maybe a little bit more near 100 to 105 kilometers an hour. So that is holding. We work our way back toward Cuba. What I showed you yesterday, again, holding right around 70 to 80 mile per hour winds, western sections. I don't, I see this kind of a borderline hurricane moving through western Cuba near Havana. Central sections, we may see some wind gusts just kind of on the back side of this by Santa Clara of about 60 miles per hour hour or 95 kilometers an hour. So that's the outlook. That forecast has stayed on track. Thank you for your trust. Now, as we watch this moving to the northwest, all around an area of high pressure, I'll show you the steering conditions and then down the road, things diverge. Some of the models have it go west, some to the north. That is common because they all see a weakening. So it won't take much for this to maybe get sucked into a front, uh, kind of bring some heavier rain or at least some extra rain uh, to parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Panhandle of Florida or back toward Louisiana, or just kind of drift its way off toward the west if this area misses the front. I'll show you that with the European model in a second. Now, going out in time, this is 24 hours out in time, 48 hours out in time, 72 hours out in time. These are those squiggly lines, the computer models 
cells. A lot of them stay in that green shading, but just start to nudge out of that, which means there should be that strengthening. And that's why I mentioned uh, near those hurricane force winds, parts of the Cayman Islands and Western Cuba, as this could be a category one hurricane, hopefully not more, as it works in uh, late tonight and then in through the day tomorrow. The rain, that's the big issue. There's already been spots of 100 millimeters of rain or four inches of rain. That's already happened in some spots across Jamaica. Uh, pick your spot. We could have an additional four inches of rain in some locations to kind of total out where we have this red shading, about eight inches or 200 millimeters of rain. That's going to lead to some landslides. So again, please, please be safe with the uh, potential of the flooding across Jamaica as we go over about the next 18 hours. Then we swing back here. Heaviest rain. This stayed right on track from what I showed you four days ago. We'll be on the edge of the heavier rain. Grand Cayman, higher totals though possible. Little Cayman and uh, Brack up upwards of about 200 millimeters of rain or eight inches of rain. Monitoring flooding throughout all the islands of the Cayman Islands. And then eventually this area works its way up to Cuba. So let me start wide and then zoom down and we'll get into some of the Cuba rain totals as well. Uh, but showing this flow kind of on the back side of it. This is later today. It'll be working its way from Jamaica over toward the Cayman Islands, but on the back side of it, still watching out for the rain. And there's that second spot that I'm watching. I'm not seeing significant uh, areas, uh, signs of development out of that, but know that I'm watching it. The Canadian model still tries to spin that up. And if you recall, the Canadian model uh, was correct on Oscar forming. So I am watching that for you in case anything spins up with that batch. But this here is by tomorrow midday. This area will work in by tomorrow morning uh, throughout Cuba, Western Cuba, and then start to lift more to the Northwest, monitoring for any signs of development with that second area near Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, and St. Martin. Now, as we get into later in the day tomorrow into Thursday, this here is by Thursday around midday. This area moves into the Gulf of Mexico. At that point, we may start to see some of the signs of it uh, weakening. Now, there's going to be one front up to the north. That front may kind of grab it and lift it up to the north. If it doesn't kind of feel that front, that can allow this area to drift a little bit more off to the west. And here is that spot number two. That could bring additional rain on Thursday to Puerto Rico, even isolated areas of flooding in Puerto Rico on Thursday. So watching a couple areas. On Friday, this area looks to be in more of that northern and central Gulf of Mexico with some weakening. Another front moves in. That may allow this to go to the north. And with that, that's what the American model is seeing. This area kind of weakens and lifts up to the north over toward the Mississippi River Valley or points off to the east. And then watching these areas here, other additional areas of rain uh, back through the Caribbean that I'll monitor for any signs of development. This here is by Saturday. We're going to see that moisture moving in. And eventually, some of the models down the road once again want to hint at some development uh, in about a week uh, or about uh, 10 days in the Caribbean. So very active November. All right, let's break down the winds further. I showed you island by island, but let me show you the core of the winds as we get into later today and tonight starting to work in through the Cayman Islands. That red shading showing up there. Those will be some winds of uh, a gust around 70 miles per hour or 110 kilometers an hour. I have both units of measurement on your screen, kilometers an hour and miles per hour to keep everyone covered. Covered. Then by the time we get into tomorrow morning, heavier uh, winds work into western Cuba, close to Havana. Uh, with that, this could be a hurricane at that point. So making those preps, of course, in western Cuba for those stronger winds, roughly around 70, maybe 80 miles per hour or upwards of 110, maybe 125 kilometers an hour as those winds move by. So showing you that this here, just expanding it out. This is tomorrow morning, then taking you out in time to show you as this area moves into the Gulf, uh, the heaviest weather here are the Florida Keys the lower keys key west this is by the time we get into late tomorrow heaviest weather is off to the east west of the florida keys although uh, we could get brushed by uh, some tropical storm conditions no doubt across the uh, keys but heaviest weather stays over in the uh, water and then this here is by thursday afternoon and you see as this area just kind of drifts to the north it starts to lose some of that red shading that's a sign that this area is going to eventually weaken kind of broaden out the wind field again not as much red whatsoever still some gusty wind still tropical tropical storm on Friday, and then the American model has this area weakened further and then eventually lifting up to the north. Meanwhile, watching out for some of the at least breezier to windier conditions in the Bahamas with that second spot that will kind of uh, trek its way off toward the west. So watching these two areas out there. Now, here kind of shows the steering conditions a little bit better. Uh, here's Cuba. 
Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Belize, uh, Trinidad, Barbados, just to kind of orient you. Uh, right here, this is uh, Raphael. This is later today. Uh, by this afternoon, high pressure and control. This is just kind of running around. That high pressure has been keeping everything down to the south. These fronts, though, add a little tug. It allows it to kind of work its way up to the north. So, of course, by tonight, tomorrow, this works through the Cayman Islands. And then by tomorrow, late morning, this starts to, uh, it's pretty much on top of western Cuba as either strong tropical storm storm or a hurricane at that point. Here comes a front here helping to kind of tug this back toward the northwest. Now, what the European model sees down the road, it says, yeah, this front is pulling it up toward the northwest, but the European model says, hey, this front's going to move by, and then eventually that will just kind of almost release this system and allow it to drift more back toward the west as high pressure temporarily builds in. So here's this front that'll scoop by, and then the European model has this drift to the west. That's why the models are different. American model says this front is going to kind of take it up to the north, while the European model saying it's going to kind of miss and just kind of work its way off to the west. Not showing development out of that area near Puerto Rico behind it, but the Canadian model Model is. So that's why I'm watching that in case anything spins up with that. This here is by Friday and you can see in the central Gulf of Mexico, generally just to the north of the Yucatan Peninsula. If the European model pans out, this would be a tropical storm north of the Yucatan Peninsula, north of Merida, north of Cancun. And then as we get into the weekend and early in next week, the next front would come in, help add to that wind shear, and then the system would just eventually fall apart. So that is one of the scenarios uh, down the road that could happen. So it's hard to tell kind of which way uh, as far as the end game goes with this, uh, but both of those significant models do show the weakening. Now in the short term, the strengthening. I mentioned that it is getting stronger. Raphael's getting stronger, feeding off of the warm water, uh, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 30 degrees Celsius. Cooler water though, back in the Gulf of Mexico, which is helpful down the road. And some wind shear. Now the wind shear though, I don't think is as big of a factor. I do think some of the wind shear, at least initially, will be a little bit more to the north. This here is on Thursday. Kind of looking at some of the new information. Uh, the wind shear more to the north. That can allow it to stay a named system longer through the Gulf of Mexico. But the water is still a little bit cool here and the dry air is going to be helpful to kind of prevent any crazy intensification. That's at least the hope. But you see the wind shear in the red shading is a little bit more to the north. So just kind of keep an eye on that. I don't want to get too sciencey, but just uh, know that I'm watching that as we get down the road. So here's that closer look. Here we are in Jamaica. Jamaica today, the core of this will eventually scoot on by late today and move right into the Cayman Islands for us. But on the back side of it, still some of that heavier rain, even as you get into southern sections, Port-au-Prince south, south of Port-au-Prince, get over toward Jacques Mel. We could see some of that heavier rain trying to work into some of our mountainous terrain uh, in our southern end of Haiti. And then you see here from the Cayman Islands into Cuba by tomorrow morning. Still tomorrow early, we're going to have tropical storm, hurricane gust in the Cayman Islands. And then that action moves right into Cuba as we go from the morning in through the day tomorrow. So this is by Wednesday afternoon. And you see the system here pulling its way through western Cuba and then eventually working its way toward the northwest. And here's that other spot we'll be watching working its way into the northeastern Caribbean. Not seeing development quite yet on this, but it will increase our rain. Antigua Barbuda, of course, uh, will get a better chance of rain. I'll show you that with the uh, forecast as we go forward. And then here by Thursday, you see Rafael working its way into the eastern and central Gulf of Mexico. And then watching that area there, additional rain, Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. And then I'll monitor this for the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. If it does spin up, I'll let you know ahead of time, watching it carefully, because we saw how Oscar was kind of a very odd system, how that spun up so very quickly. But giving you already the heads up, watching those two areas out there. So Rafael, that is out there. If we get another name system, I do believe at some point we will. Sarah is the next name on the list. Tony, Valerie, and William as we round out the uh, list for this uh, season. Eastern Pacific, by the way, has a different list of names. So the seas, of course, building. They are very dangerous around Jamaica, but we've had the higher seas too. Puerto Rico to the north, uh, Dominican Republic to the north through the Turks and Caicos, just around that area of high pressure. Uh, but of course, it's going to be a mess as we work our way into the eastern and central sections of the Gulf of Mexico. This here is by tomorrow. Meters here, feet on that side of your screen. Everything, of course, building tomorrow. 
Now, the uh, European model has this area work more to the west, so we'll see if that is the case later in the week. The seas will build in the Western Caribbean, while the American model, Western Gulf of Mexico, while the American model has this area lift more to the north. So kind of a wait and see on uh, that scenario. Now, as we get to the north of here, here's Bermuda. Sometimes this time of year, these systems could get wrapped up into fronts and lift to the north. As of now, Bermuda, high pressure has been locked in, keeping all that weather down to the south. Atlantic region of Canada, just watching that pattern where we get every uh, almost every other day, it feels like we get at least some sort of front that is moving by. This here is on Wednesday, and of course, every time we get a front this time of year, the chillier weather, the colder weather will be back behind it, and then I'll be watching to see how much of this moisture kind of gets sucked up and around, and eventually that may help break down that area of high pressure over toward Bermuda. Watching this spot over toward Mexico, development, uh, not seeing a ton of that at this time, but I'm going to keep an eye on this area right in here. Here's Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, right in through here. This is the spot I'll be watching because this is not necessarily going to shoot to the west. This may hang out for a few days, just kind of drift its way off toward the east, closer to land. As of now, uh, nothing uh, giving me uh, much alarm with this in the short term, but if anything does try to spin up a little bit further and build back towards Central America, kind of build back toward Mexico, I'll be watching it. This is by the time we get into the weekend, and you see some pockets of rain. We'll just kind of see here what may or may not develop out of that pocket. Now, here's Cuba. I zoomed down in the rain. I zoomed down in the uh, wind totals for us in Cuba, uh, Cayman Islands, and Jamaica. As this rolls through western Cuba, we're going to see some totals of about six to eight inches of rain or 150 millimeters of rain to 200 millimeters of some of that rain. Of course, Cayman Islands, Jamaica covered us. South side of Haiti, there we go. We could have some spots of four inches of rain or 100 millimeters of rain. That'll lead to those dangerous river crossings and even a landslide potential southern Haiti, Puerto Rico, and then back through Anguilla. This is that second spot and you see some of the totals, this white and this black shading, if this kind of nudges a little closer, we could have some areas as we get toward the end of the week, four to six inches of rain or 100 to 150 millimeters of rain. So watching that close to Saba, Stacia, St. Kitts and Nevis, this here is scattered Dominica south through St. Lucia, St. Vincent the Grenadines, Grenada, uh, seeing some spotty showers, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Suriname, Guyana, not as much, north uh, eastern Venezuela, could see a couple showers still monitoring, of course, Costa Rica, Panama, the rain chance has gone down. Same thing in Colombia. Not that we're not still getting that chance of rain. It just hasn't been as much for most of us uh, that we had uh, earlier this uh, week, uh, or rather yesterday in this uh, past weekend. Scattered areas of rain, Honduras, Nicaragua, Belize, not as much. A little bit drier, a little bit drier, Yucatan Peninsula, and then back toward Mexico proper as we get over toward Mexico City. So, of course, all eyes on Jamaica today with the tropical storm conditions. All eyes on the Cayman Islands later today, tonight, and early tomorrow for tropical storms storm to hurricane conditions that will be with us. Scattered areas of rain possible, Trinidad and Tobago, 50% chance, 40 to 50% chance in Barbados, 30 to 40% chance in St. Lucia the next two days. Grenada, rain chance holding at about 50%, staying unsettled, 40 to 50% chance St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the next three days. 30% chance today in Martinique, up to about a 50% chance on Thursday, and running at that same kind of uh, outlook as we work our way through Dominica, rain chance 40% for tomorrow. 40 to 50% chance in Guadalupe. There we go. Antigua and Barbuda. The rain chance gets higher tomorrow and Thursday. I'll monitor some areas of flooding. Not seeing development right now, but that rain chance is going up. It goes up. St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat. 60% chance for tomorrow and a 60 uh, to 70% chance tomorrow and Thursday. Anguilla and St. Bart. I showed you how some of those totals could be higher. We do that again. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Then we work our way back toward Puerto Rico as well. The rain chance is about to build. Watching out for some areas of flooding starting tomorrow and then eventually on Thursday we could see some more and that includes U.S. and British Virgin Islands as that rain chance picks up. Bahamas 40 to 50 percent chance. We swing back toward the Turks and Caicos on Thursday. We'll see some of that moisture trying to work in with that rain chance building to about 50 percent. Scattered areas of rain and storms possible across the Dominican Republic. Haiti, it's where I was showing you earlier, south side. That's where we could see some of that flooding. Belize rain chance is down for us. Only 20 percent. 30 percent chance in Aruba, 30% chance in Curacao and Bonaire over the next uh, few days. Rain chance pretty minimal in Guyana, only a 20% chance, down to about a 10% chance over the next few days as we get into Suriname. Rain chance 40% today in Cuba. Now tomorrow, of course, in Cuba, it's the western sections that we're watching for the tropical storm 
to hurricane conditions. Costa Rica, Panama, rain chance trying to trend down. 40 to 50% chance in Nicaragua. 20 to 30% chance just isolated as we work our way through Honduras. 40 to 50% chance Guatemala and El Salvador in dry and hot in Mexico City. Could see a stray shower. 20% chance Yucatan Peninsula the next couple of days. 40 to 50% chance in northern Colombia and about a 30 to 40% chance in northern Venezuela. Then we get back through Bermuda. Generally, some of those dry conditions. So all eyes right now in Jamaica. Back into the Cayman Islands, over toward Cuba, watching out for those flooding impacts, the winds, watching how strong this gets to see if it does get to hurricane status. This will eventually move into the Gulf of Area, uh, Mexico and watching that second area near the northeastern Caribbean. Got you covered. This is a weather community. It is for you. So leave your comments, what you got going on, your location. So it kind of gives everyone a good feel of what's happening with Raphael. Please be safe and have a good rest of your day.